you never see anything appear. Everything about you does not actually indicate this canon. Not a point to canon, but the God's opinion and God's plan for you is to go to canon. So, but everything look pointing to different way. And uh, what point, the, what we are seeing within you is what is the direction of you. So what we are seeing now, look at the, the weather. Weather does not look like it will rain. But if God's opinion says it will rain, definitely what we are going to do is to try to put something outside to dry your clothes, dry whatever you need to dry, but you will never believe that the rain will come any moment from now. But by the time you start raining, what you need to do, you begin to run and, break and carry all those things you have dry. But if you know God's opinion that any moment from now it will rain, but no matter how the weather looks like, you will not put something out there to dry. So this is just the lie. Why we don't know God's opinion about our about us? Because you never depend on God's spirit to serve him. Tell your neighbor, you, you don't know God's opinion about you. But you, because you never live up, upon God's spirit to serve God. When you don't depend on God's spirit to serve God, you will never know God's opinion about you. Because when you are when you serve God without depend on, on God's spirit, it's like you are serving a human being. So this is different between Christianity and religious people. Christianity depends upon God's spirit to serve God. Why religious people serve God? without depending upon God's spirit. That's the difference between religion and the, gospel, and the Christianity. Christianity depends upon hope, upon God's spirit to serve God. Why religious people, they just serve God without depending upon God's spirit. This is what we call religious acts, act of worship. Once again, the difference between religious worshippers and Christianity that is different. Jesus came to restore our relationship and fellowship between God and man. Jesus came to restore our relationship and fellowship between who? Between God and man. That is Christianity. But religious people believe they must go there before they can see, but we believe he came. He said, I will not leave, leave you without direction. And I will not leave you without Father. That is the Spirit, Holy Spirit. I will not leave you without direction. When he was going, he said, oh, I will, I will, I will leave you soon, but I will not leave you without direction. The direction is that Holy Spirit. So the Christianity serve depend on God's Spirit to serve God. That is Christianity. Depend on God's Spirit to serve God. Because God is Spirit. And no one can serve him without depending on the spirit. No one can talk to God 
without depending on God's spirit, no one can pray to him without depending on God's spirit. No one can relate with him, no one can have a relationship with him without depending on God's spirit because God is spirit. When he come, like I told you, if Jesus come now and enter the synagogue, the question will not be who dancing where, who preach where, who attend this church every day, who always sleeping in the synagogue. The question will not be who come regularly, who dress where, who know Bible from Genesis to Revelation, who always coming to this church regularly. Who is David Joshua among you? The question will be who worship him in spirit and truth? That is the question, the answer. Because God is spirit. So you have now religious people. That is why out of religion, when you see religious man, like there are many in our midst here, there are many. If, if I may write, 70%, like I'm looking at, more than 70%, there are religious people in our midst here. It is true they are inside the church. It is true they are inside the synagogue. It is true they are sitting down. But more than 70% in our midst here are religious worshippers. They are here today. They are religious people. Some of their acts, their behaviors, the, the, the situation dictates the direction of their prayer. And when they are sick, they will ask for prayer, for healing. When they are poor, they will ask for blessing. That is religious people. When they are sick, when it is time to pray, they say, Please, heal me, heal me, heal me, heal me. Hardly you see them say, thank you, Jesus, because they have so much problem. They are waiting until their problem is over, and when you think you will be over, and the more your commitment, the more your attack, the more your relationship with God, everything close to God receive attack. Blessing attract attack. The blessing of God attract attack. The breakthrough, when you receive that breakthrough, the attack also increase. Because, I mean, it increase. But Christianity, their behavior, when you say a Christian, a true Christian, when you say a true Christian, a true Christian would may be sick, Yet, thank you, Jesus. When a true Christian, you know, a man can be poor and yet be a Christian. A true Christian may be poor. When he pray, will say, thank you, Jesus. Like his father, when he was called for the death of Lazarus, you say, oh. Instead of saying, hey, rise. He say, Father, I thank you for what you have been doing. And I know presently you will do this one. People around were saying, we call you to raise the dead, and you are thanking God. The dead is still in the, in, the, in the grave. Look at the dead in the coffee. And you are thanking God. For what? The Pharisees and the were laughing. So what is foolish, this man? We are crying here, and you are thanking God for what? true Christian, you will only see them giving thanks to God. Situation does not dictate the direction of their prayer. I can be sick and, and yet say, thank you, Lord. Because I know it's aware, it's aware of my situation. When it's aware of my situation, it's no longer situation. 
when Jesus is involved, that situation is no longer sickness. When he's aware, it's all. The problem is solved. Listen once again, 70 more than 70 percent of us are what? Religious worshippers. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit opens our eyes to what is seen by Christ Jesus. He opens our eyes to miracles, open our eyes to this, open our eyes to that. Testified of Jesus that is healer, deliverer, the Holy Spirit. He testified of Jesus that is deliverer. You cannot say Jesus is deliverer when you are not dependent upon the Holy Spirit, I mean the Spirit of God. Worship God, the truth in truth and faith. Who? Who is worshiping? When faith is not of man's mind, man's body, but of man's spirit, faith. Faith is of man's world. Spirit is not of man's body. If this church you are talking about is not of man's body, it's not of man's flesh, but of man's faith, I mean spirit. Where are we going? You know that Satan knew you were coming here and he could not stop you. When you know this, you overcome. You know, is the author of your complaint. You know, Satan is the author of sickness. You know, he's the author of affliction. You know that? If you know that, let us see your hand. He's the author. He manufactures those things. He has a factory that he manufactures the sickness, disease, affliction, limitation in progress. These are his products. He has factory everywhere. He has factory. He has factory, he manufactured those things. Satan is the author. So those things you are complaining about, whatever situation you are in, are you depressed? Are you, what is your complaint? Satan is the author. And uh, he will not want you to get free. He will not want you to be free. And if he know that you are coming to a place of freedom, he will block you. <clears throat> Unless you are destined to be free. <clears throat> that is why it has been so difficult for you to come here. Many of you are here for so it it, it it was not just a bed of roses. You are not just wake up and iron your dress and say, I'm going to synagogue. And you just find yourself in the synagogue. It has been battle and battle and battle and battle. <laughs> you know,
know how many months, how many years it took you to come here. At the beginning, it was difficult for you to confess sin alone, to confess humanity to, to, in the public. It was a battle and battle and battle and battle and battle. If this place were not a place of freedom, you would not have any problem at all. The persecution, persecution care. You would just be walking here freely and uh, talking freely. Just come here as if you come to club. Freely, you look for, you are looking for a transportation to come. The Satan will just give you like that to come because you know that uh, you are deceiving yourself. He you want you to come to where they can deceive you freely. You go there freely. You go money. You no know, problem. But a place of freedom, a place where you you will, you will be, I mean, separated from him. You know what it means to have a liberty. Liberty demanding for war. It could be cold war. Liberty demanding for war. War! Most especially war in our hearts is the greatest war. It's not the war of carry bomb or the one you are called Boko Haram one. That is not war. The greatest war is in our heart. Before you are defeated, you must have been defeated in the heart. If I'm talking, let me see your hand. Before you overcome, you must have overcome in the heart. The physical war you are seeing now is just an extension. The bank of war, freedom, is in our heart. Bank is here. You know you have to cash money. You now go out to spend it. Greatest war is here. The battle, greater, the greatest battle is here. You don't need to foresee. One does not need to, to be saved before die. Fifty <laughs> percent of the today, fifty percent all over the world that are dying today, they don't see. You don't need to be saved before die. You don't say ah. You know what happened to this man now? He's very fine. Look at the medical report. Everything's fine. Doctor confirmation, it's okay. He's fine. Move on. But we don't find that uh, he could not breathe again. So those who are waiting for sickness or war or this something to lead to death, no, you don't need that. Whatever you might have achieved in terms of possession, wealth, does not take a Satan a second to collapse it, just like a worm. Your heart. If you are going to be delivered, your heart will testify to it. And if you are not going to be delivered, your heart too will do all, will testify to that. That's it. It's the contact point communication point so what
when I'm looking at you, your appearance does not mean anything to me. Because in the same day, don't look at my appearance. There are two natures here in, in before you. Means Statibi Joshua and Prophet Ibi Joshua. You are looking at the Mr. Tibi Joshua, the Prophet Tibi Joshua. You cannot see him with your naked eyes. You are not here to meet Mr. Tibi Joshua. Mr. Tibi Joshua cannot help you. That is human sympathy. This body, appearance, cannot help you. But you are here to meet divine nature of holiness and it takes faith to see this so you to yourself your appearance does not when i meet you you are crying i'm not looking at your sympathy i'm not looking at your cry cry does not say so in fact when I move towards you, you call me, you try and ask me to help you, it's like you are disturbing me. It's a hindrance. Unless the Holy Spirit lead you to do that. Like Batman, he cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. If the Holy Spirit lead you to do that, go ahead and do it. But if it's not lead you to do that, and do that, it becomes a sin. Ah, mother, go help me. Mother, go help me. Make sure it's the Holy Spirit that lead you to do that. If you are not led by the Holy Spirit, and you shout, cry out, you are committed sin. You have become a hindrance to the Holy Spirit. Action, our action, crying, shouting, prayer, fasting, looking, running, mean standing, must be regulated and guided by the word of God. Must be what? Must be what? Must be regulated and guided by the word of God. Don't look at other to shout because this man is shouting, you to join to shout. No! Faith does not permit that. There is no imitation in faith. Because I shout, you shout. You cry, I cry. No, there is no imitation. Because it is of heart. Faith is of spirit. Not of emotion. So let me, let me come to the, your understanding. I want to assure you here, your coming here today is not by accident. It's not by accident. Because I knew you were coming. 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 It's not by accident. If Satan could not stop you, he knew also you were coming here, but he could not stop you because you are destiny. Yeah. Destiny for what? To be free today. Yeah. Destiny for what? To be free today. If Satan could stop you, he would have done that. You are destined to be free. 
Because you are destined to be free, you will be free. Because you are destined to be loosed, you will be loosed. You are destined to be delivered. And you will be delivered today. Now, with this revelation, what next? Next is to begin to thank God. Whatever happened on the outside, whatever happened to your flesh, whatever happened to your body, whatever experience you are having, you just have to begin to be thank thanking God. Give thanks to Him. Give thanks to Him. And stop complaining. Stop complaining. Your case is under control. Rise up, rise up. In my heart, Lord, I want to be like Jesus. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the little time God will be given us to move on. I want you to be in the in spirit. 
you have two sections. I will take my own section, and the wise men will come also to continue the job that will last tomorrow. We know the nature of this, the nature of our job here, which is surely the, the deliverance aspect of it, is the most difficult because my Bible made me to understand that no one can be born again unless he or she is delivered. Thing pass away, all other things become what? Burn again. That is the, the short definition for born again. Your old nature, the old nature, that demands to see, sense knowledge. So, the assignment is not just, I, my, my heart desire is to see everyone touched. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So it is time for me to, to just move. Like I have said, if I am not uh, get it to your own side, look, when I look, I don't know, I just asked God what direction to follow. Because everyone would have loved me to talk to them. But, so, let the will of God be done. God has talked to me, and I now want to talk to you. Amen. Imagine if God gave me revelation about almost 10,000. This is the message for them. So I will talk to one, I will meet some one on one, and I will come back here to deliver this message by in, 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 in a mass prayer. So whatever I say to you, and I say after me, it will not come without happen. So thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you may be seated. Thank you.